5.2 is going to be sum and difference formulas and we're talking about the sum and difference of angles and then you're evaluating it by sine, cosine, and tangent. So the idea is that you have some kind of sum or difference inside of the argument of a trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent. So first, you know, how do we come up with a formula for that? Is it something simple? Is it a trivial formula that we can like kind of understand without much thinking? And the idea is that it's not easy to come up with that formula. So I'll give you an idea based on what we know. Here's a unit circle, okay? And we have an angle beta and we have an angle alpha, right? And those angles have a terminal side, which is, this is the terminal side of beta and this is the terminal side of alpha. And there are two points, point P, which is cosine comma sine of beta. And then here up on the other point is point Q. We can say that point Q is made of cosine of alpha comma sine of alpha. Now that is all good, but we're trying to figure out the distance from P to Q. And that distance is tied together with this angle in the middle. That angle inside of the triangle is the difference between alpha and cosine. So the difference of that angle can be evaluated somehow. So notice how that triangle, the blue triangle, is not in standard form. What does it mean to not be in standard form? Is that the, tr the original size should be on the x-axis. So if we were to shift it or rotate it to the right so that it lands on the x-axis, we can have point P uh, simply be one comma zero. And then point Q is gonna be the difference between cosine well, it's going to be the difference between the angles and then the function evaluating it at that difference. So that is the beginning only to figuring out the formula. So after that, we would have to use distance formula to solve for cosine of alpha minus beta. We would have to do it for this figure. So distance formula for that in distance formula for this and then later on compare some results but I'm not going to show you that on here since we're not so much focused on developing the formula itself so the definition is this cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times sine of beta. So whatever is first in terms of the argument is what we're considering alpha. So cosine of that first argument times cosine of the second argument plus sine of the first times sine of the second argument. So let's do an example. Find the exact value of cosine of 15 degrees. Well, if you, if you think back to the unit circle and kind of understand that very well, there is no cosine of 15 degrees that shows up on the unit circle. But we can kind of think of a couple different combinations that can give us 15 degrees, right? So we have to be very creative from this point on. So we can say cosine of 60 minus 45 right because 60 minus 45 is equals to 15 so we've only changed the way it looks but we haven't changed the value so now we have it in terms of a difference right so in other words this is my alpha and 
this is my beta right so let's go and fully solve this so cosine of alpha minus beta or cosine of 60 minus 45 is the same thing as cosine of 60 times cosine of 45 plus sine of 60 times sine of 45 right uh, then we can simplify those things cosine of 60 is one half cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2 plus sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2 times sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. So now we have more simplifying to do, which is just combining those fractions. 1 times the square root of 2 is 2. Well, 1 times the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. Uh, don't make this mistake. Square root of, well, the denominators, right? 2 times 2 is 4. Don't forget that plus 2 times the square root of, th well, square root of 2 times the square root of 3 comes out to be the square root of 6, all over 4, and this becomes square root of 2 plus square root of 6, all over 4, and we're done. This is considered an exact solution, so don't try to plug this in a calculator and get a decimal for it. That would make it an approximation, okay? So, overall, these are going to be the four formulas for the difference between cosine, well, the difference between an angle evaluated by cosine and sine. We still have to talk about tangent in one second. So, Cosine of the sum of two angles is equals to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of alpha times sine of beta. The difference between two angles we already talked about, then the sum of two angles evaluated by sine is equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. Now the difference between two angles evaluated by sine is going to be sine of alpha times cosine of beta minus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. So you get the idea. We are going to use these formulas in order to be able to come up with an exact solution. So the next one that we're going to do, the next example, is sine of 7 pi over 12. And if you think back to the unit circle, 7 pi over 12 is not really one of the angles that we know. So how can we rewrite it in such a way that we can make use of these formulas? Well, you want to use the fact, right? So use this fact that 7 pi over 12 can be expressed as 3 pi plus 4 pi over 12, right? I've only rewritten 7 pi, so that means that I can express sine of 7 pi over 12 as 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. That is the same thing as 7 pi over, I'm sorry, sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. So from there, we will just 
use the formula that corresponds to it. So this is going to be sine of pi over 3 times cosine. Oops, that should be pi over 4. So be very careful. You can make a mistake at any time. Cosine of pi over 3 plus cosine of pi over 4 times sine of pi over 3. And then the next thing will be to figure out those different values. Sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2 times 1 half for cosine of pi over 3 plus cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2 times square root of 3 over 2. And this becomes the square root of 2 over 4 plus square root of 6 over 4. And if we write that all in 1, we get the following square root of 2 plus square root of 6, all of it divided by 4. Now we want to verify the formula for tangent, so the sum and difference of angles evaluated by tangent. First we have the difference of two angles being evaluated by tangent that is equal to tangent of the first input or alpha minus tangent of beta divided by 1 plus the product between tangent alpha and tangent beta. Then the sum of two angles here is the second formula evaluated by tangent is equal to tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta divided by 1 plus the product between tangent alpha and tangent beta. So those are the two formulas for tangent. What we want to do, for example, now is verify an identity, which we could expect to see uh, by using the definitions of the sum and difference formulas from all the different identities. So for example, here we're asked to verify the following, which is tangent of x minus pi over 4. And we want to verify that it is equals to tangent of x minus 1 divided by tangent of x plus 1. So how do we do that? Well, we want to use the difference formula, which is the first formula we see up there. So that tells me that tangent of x minus tangent of pi over 4 go on the numerator. In the denominator I have 1 plus tangent of x times tangent of pi over 4. So this is the first step, right? At least plug in the values where they belong and then we can evaluate them later. It's best to not do those things all in one step. That will save you some trouble. So tangent of x, well, I don't know what x is, so I cannot simplify that. But also that is on the final solution. So I probably want to keep it there because it's going to be used to define the identity or the, the verifying of the identity. Then we have tangent of pi over 4. That we can evaluate. So what is tangent of pi over 4? And that comes out to be a 1, right? That's one easy value. Hopefully we remember those. And if not, we can look them up in the unit circle. Then we have 1 plus tangent of x times pi over 4 tangent of pi over 4, which is 1. So we don't have to write that. We can just say, you know, it's implied that it is times 1. Uh, it's not looking 
exactly like the definition or the verification we're trying to make, but we can move things around so that it looks exactly like we want the identity to look like. And it's going to be tangent of x minus 1 over tangent of x plus 1. And notice how I just flipped the order between those two. And I can do that as long as I keep the sign that is in front of every number. Okay, and then we've shown that the left hand side is equals to the right hand side. And we did we did this by showing the different steps and using the identities correctly.